So I will uh, uh, describe the work we are doing with next generation laser reflectors for solar system exploration and, and ge geodesy and gravitational physics. I'll do that. Okay. So this is the outline. I will uh, uh, tell you about uh, reflectors that we are uh, building for uh, lunar laser ranging, which allows us to test the uh, general relativity in the Earth, Sun, Earth, Moon system. These are ranged by the Earth. We can improve uh, tests of gravity up to a factor of 100 with this. And then we are also um, working on uh, smaller reflectors, which are ranged by orbiters around the Moon or Mars. Uh, and these are uh, conceived to improve exploration, geodesy, and gravity. And the main thing in the next years is going to be that uh, also um, laser communication uh, uh, orbiters can range to these uh, reflectors in, uh, in Moon and Mars orbits. And I give you two examples of these. One is the uh, LADI spacecraft, which now is down, but uh, demonstrated the um, laser ranging with the 200 picosecond accuracy from moon orbits and the other payload, IROC, integrated radio optical communications payload, which is being developed by Glenn in order to work in Mars orbits. Okay, so this is our uh, payload for the moon. It's a large reflector. Uh, the payload consists of uh, um, aluminum housing and then the two thermal shields to protect the glass from uh, heat radiated by the housing rings to mount uh, all, the, all the components. And you can see that the uh, size of the reflector is uh, 100 millimeters compared to the 38 millimeters for uh, Apollo. Uh, the mass of the package is one kilogram and the size is about uh, 10 uh, centimeter uh, high, high height and 13 centimeter diameter. Uh, this is um, a photo of all the components of the payload which have been uh, uh, printed with a 3D printer uh, in Italy. You see the rings, you see the housing and the two thermal cans. Uh, these are pictures of the uh, big reflector over here with the rings in contact with the uh, tabs of the reflector. And this is the whole package assembled. Uh, we are now studying um, a support structure in order to install these on a lander and to orient the uh, reflector towards the Earth depending on the landing site. So we are starting with a very uh, stiff support, and then, then we are uh, developing other solutions, which are lighter. This is the team of uh, uh, people working in Italy on the characterization of the thermal optical uh, performance uh, of the uh, reflector. So we have a facility which is dedicated to the characterization of the performance of the laser reflectors in space conditions. So we have two uh, cryostats, which are called optical ground support equipment facilities in which we create the space environment, including the uh, perturbation of the sun. And then we measure both the thermal performance of the reflector in terms of uh, IR interferometry, and also the optical performance in terms of our field diffraction pattern and the um, uh, piezo interferometry. So these are pictures of the big reflector close to the Apollo reflector, which is then installed in the chamber for thermal vacuum testing. And this is a thermogram of the front face of the big reflector, which shows uh, that we can uh, track uh, thermal gradients over the face of the reflector and optimize its behavior. Now, the main idea is that uh, if we use uh, one single large reflector instead of an array, then we can reduce the uncertainty on the time of flight considerably. And the main application of this uh, lunar reflector is to test general relativity. This is the set of uh, um, gravity measurements that we can do some of the equivalence principle, some on the PPM parameter beta, uh, time variation of big G, the inverse square law, and all these tests which are now done with a certain accuracy with the Apollo and lunar code, we can improve this by up to a factor of uh, 100 with the new reflectors. And the most important thing is that we can uh, do uh, normal point measurements of the Earth-Moon distance uh, with one single return by the new large reflectors. Instead, we need uh, a few thousand of the old uh, reflectors, of the returns for the old reflectors, because uh, these are uh, measurements widened by the structure of the array coupled to the libration of the moon. 
So we will install this either uh, Rovers or Landers. Landers is the current option, as you will see later. And in the future, we hope to install this on the regular. So other options are to, um, our options at the moment are to propose this for Moon Express, which is competing for GLXP. Uh, we are also making a proposal to the Russian Space Agency uh, to deploy both the large and uh, small reflector, which I will show in a minute, on the uh, Luna 27 mission, which is going to land on the moon in 2019. And we are also studying new gravitational physics. In addition to testing general relativity with uh, improved accuracy, we are also studying new phenomena like uh, the inclusion of space-time torsion together with space-time curvature and non-minimally coupled gravity. So this is a list of papers in case you are interested. Now, this is a small reflector we are developing. This is conceived in order to improve uh, planet exploration, geodesy, and gravity for uh, uh, rovers and landers beyond the moon, in Mars, and other uh, bodies of the solar system. We call this instrument for landing roving laser laser reflector investigations. This is particularly interesting if you have a rover, because you can track from uh, lasers in orbit the moving of the reflector with the rover on the surface. So you can uh, uh, measure the position of the landing site. You can follow and track the uh, uh, roving exploration activity. And if you have multiple of these reflectors on the surface, for instance, of Mars, then you can establish a, a planetary geology reference frame. So the payload is uh, passive, like the other one, like all reflectors. It's very lightweight. At the moment, it's around 50 grams. It doesn't require any pointing, and the size of the reflector array is like this, a couple of inches. Now, we're proposing this at the moment for two Mars missions. We proposed it for uh, Mars 2020. Uh, we're also proposing this for uh, the next uh, uh, European rover, which is going to be uh, launched and, and landed on, on Mars in 2018. This is by ESA and, and also with the participation of Roscosmos. So the main goals for this are, as I said, to follow the, the characterize the position of the exploration activity. Uh, if the rover stops at the end of the exploration because it found uh, some uh, site very interesting for uh, exolife, which uh, you may want to access in the future with a simple return mission or another mission, then you have a, 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 a very accurate positioning point of your rover at the end of life, and then you can go back to that point in the future. You can also use the reflector uh, by doing uh, an atmospheric trace species detection from orbit, because if you have a reflector on a rover, then if you have the instrument on, on the orbiter, you, you get a, a very large return to the atmosphere. You can do this measurement not only at Nadir, but also in other directions as the orbiter moves across uh, uh, the sky. And finally, you can also test your laser communication hardware in orbit, because if you beam the data to the Earth, you may want to check the integrity of your system on a local baseline, so from the orbiter to the uh, reflector sitting on the surface. And then all this is useful if you have multiple reflectors to establish a, a reference frame and to study gravity. This will take more time, but as you have uh, reference points on the surface of Mars, like on the Moon, then you can improve all your testing of general activity. So this is uh, finally a cartoon which shows that we can extend this uh, uh, scheme to any other uh, airless body in the solar system. Uh, we will test this on the moon, hopefully with Moon Express. We will uh, uh, try and do this with Mars rovers. But then, uh, if you have a rover or a mini rover which explores a, a, a planetary surface, you can, uh, in principle, also uh, deploy some of these uh, passive reflectors over the surface. And if there is no weather concern like on Mars, where there are very strong winds, so there is an atmosphere, then this will stay forever on, uh, on the surface. And they can, they can be positioned and tracked by future uh, orbiters, either if they do altimetry, but especially if they do laser communication, because their hardware has a high performance, and it can do laser range in time of flight very easily, and it can, it can point accurately. So in conclusion, we have several uh, proposals going on. The one for GLXP, uh, the main one we have is Moon Express. We are doing proposals to Roscosmos and, Ch and, and do, to the Chinese Space Agency for the Changi future flights. We will be waiting for uh, uh, another major opportunity in the US to um, establish a lunar geophysical network and provide reflectors for those. 
Um, we have proposed this for the Mars rovers, and now we are, we are now working on a proposal of affiliation of our institute uh, to NASA survey, in which uh, a large part of the work is devoted to the design, construction, and deployment of solar system reflectors for, this, uh, for these goals. Uh, this is close to final, and we will probably sign it in uh, September. And then I just want to announce that uh, uh, we had uh, this year the second lunar symposium, European lunar symposium in London, and we agreed that the next one will be in Frascati, Italy, close to Rome, in 2015, around May. That's it. Thank you. I have a question. Um, so there's there's a lot of exciting things you can do with a retroreflector, but I think the biggest expense is getting a soft landing on the moon. Um, is it possible? Are the I guess one asking are these fragile things, or is there something where a hard landing might be as good? Because you might be able to save money if you had something that could survive, let's say, a, a somewhat modest velocity impact on the moon. Would you still get something that would work? Uh, if you're think well, let me say. Uh, reflectors with this uh, specific mounting system, the one for Apollo and for the big reflector we have now, uh, these have been flown on uh, rockets like Delta, um, and these have been uh, landed with, uh, with humans, you know, with Apollo. Uh, so this is a space qualified mechanism with those kind of uh, launchers and with those kind of uh, landers. So we expect to, to certainly survive uh, and, and do its job with the, the, the future landers like Moon Express and others, um, like uh, uh, the uh, Russian um, Luna. Uh, so that's not an issue. But if you're talking about anything landed in a more violent way, anything between soft landing and impactors, then that's unknown. And it needs a dedicated study and dedicated testing. I, I just wonder if you could save money uh, by getting rid of the lander, but yet get all the advantages by finding some like harder way to get there that's maybe cheaper. You know, well, there are yeah. there are proposals to land reflectors, for instance, on Phobos and Deimos. This is uh, a, a proposal done for the ESA Cosmic Vision by uh, people in, in Germany and, and in France. And they were proposing to use uh, um, airbags, uh, so a landing similar to perhaps the um, the Beagle, which was not successful. But other other examples are the, the Mars Exploration rovers. Uh, so that's taken into consideration, and for this specific proposal for Phobos and Deimos, they are not thinking of a landing. A lander. So a, a, I think it's the time now to think of something like that, especially as we go beyond the moon uh, to other bodies uh, like uh, Phobos and Deimos, and in the future, hopefully, also the icy moons of uh, Jupiter and Saturn. Okay, let's, uh, I think we have to move on. So let's thank our speaker again. And that concludes our session. I think we have to cede this room back over. <laughs>